cryotoid channel blood fluid. And we're back in Bayline City. It's time for some more Eden's Reach. I was going to pick things up while we left them last. How often do I say that? I'm starting to feel it's a lot. Anyway. <laughs> I slowly drift off deep into my own mind, where all I see is endless darkness. Normally, whenever I have moments like these, I'm rendered completely helpless while a horrid nightmare creeps in. I can't even form any cognitive thought during those times, as I seem to simply exist as a witness to the conjured images being laid out before me. This time, however, I manage to think and contemplate coherently, despite being fully aware that I'm still sound asleep. Nothing morbid comes to even reveal itself in this void, too. It's oddly tranquil, yet there's still this unsettling feeling that never seems to leave my abstract being. Is, is this a moment for me to think to myself? I suppose I really haven't had the time to sit down and think about everything that's happened. All right, then. Let's do this. Oswald nods before we stop. Seems like our respective rooms are convenient. After I tell myself those words, the void melts and readjusts itself into the image of the midnight sun base's main hall. It's quite fuzzy and muddled, especially in the edges of my vision, though. Huh. Seems like wherever I think of comes to life here. Is this what lucid dreaming is like? I remember Dylan telling me a lot about it and how fun and exhilarating these experiences can be. Since I'm here anyway, I suppose I'll go ahead and indulge myself. This is certainly a lot less detailed than a real thing, but I can clearly tell that over there is Alice's usual workstation with all the panels floating around. It's all jumbled up though, with some screens overlapping and her main panel being a chaotic arrangement of different shortcuts and folders. By the sofa set on the other end of the room there's a coffee table filled with... Candy wrappers? No, they're too big to be just wrappers. If only I could go get a closer look. And just like that, the scenery zooms in on the coffee table, and then able to take a closer look at the wrappers. These are milk chocolate cubes. A famous manufacturer, too. It's a shame I can't eat them for being a canine. I wonder who eats this many chocolates anyway. It can't be Max, could it? I'd rather Meteor Shell hit Bayland City right now than believe that. Maybe Oswald? But he's a canine too. Hmm. Oswald. His likeness appears before me, simply standing there that signature smile of his. His gentle gaze meets mine, never breaking eye contact as his face flushes red. How odd. Everyone else seems to be wary, even hostile towards me. Except you. Why are you so different? Your kindness and concern? Where does it come from? Out of everyone I've encountered in this waking nightmare, you just seem to be... the greatest mystery of them all. I stir slowly from my deep sleep, feeling neither light nor heavy, as if my whole body's gone numb and confused, not knowing what it should feel. Well, it's a real experience. I can still see the faint silhouette of the hunky wolf in my vision, but it quickly disappears as soon as I take notice. I try to take my surroundings in slowly once more. Still the same, slightly dusty and mostly empty room. I then decide to check the time on my phone once blood starts properly recirculating through my entire body again. It's way later into the afternoon. Would a stone have woken me up by now? I worriedly jump out of bed and rush towards the hallway, my heart steadily sinking, feeling as if I've done something wrong again. The door slides open and I run through at full speed, not even being aware of my surroundings. What meets me on the other side is a tall figure that I bump into, knocking me off balance for I fall flat on my face. Yeah! What in there? I quickly pick myself back up and look hurriedly at what I just bumped into. Much to my surprise, it was Benji, who was holding rolls of some kind of material, some of which are currently on the floor. Ugh. I do not want to have another altercation with him. The last thing I need is for both my ears to be bandaged. 
should really watch where you're going, you know. He gives me a mischievous smirk while he keeps his eyes on me. I sigh as I stand up. Yep, I'm aware. If strangers were to see you like that, they'd think you were a lunatic. Benji moves towards my other side, giggling like an asshole. So, you think I'm a lunatic? <laughs> oh, please, you make it sound like we're complete strangers. But we are, though. Benji chuckles to himself. <laughs> oh, my, my, so cold and hostile. Where even is that coming from? Uh, tell that to the bandage here. I swear, what is with this guy? Yeah, I don't have time for this. I'm late. A late? Uh, for what, exactly? A training or something. I don't know, just leave me alone. I start walking away and Benji suddenly stops me in my tracks. A training? From who, Oswald? Who else? Benji doesn't bother to stifle his chuckle anymore. He instead grasps my shoulder, causing my entire being to flinch. Well, before you go and make a fool of yourself, I have to mention that Oswald isn't going to be here for the majority of the day. He has work today. What? What work? Oh, I don't know. At the bar? They have alternating work days. Hmm. I don't like what that insinuates. Well, if you don't believe me, you can ask him on the way. Oh, and... Benji makes audible sniffing noises for continuing. Wait. Did he just sniff me? Oh, you need a shower. When was the last time you cleaned yourself? I, well, two days ago? Unacceptable. Go with me, the showers are this way. Benji begins to pace away from me. I take a moment to sniff myself and... Oh, jeez, I really do need a bath. I hesitantly follow the raccoon, covering any of my uh, stinky parts on the way there. We reach the entrance to the shower shortly. The faint trickling of pouring water echoes across the walls. Seems like some people are already in. Let's be quick about the rinse, then. I don't want to encounter anyone in their birthday suit, after all. You can throw your clothes in the hamper over there. Towels are over there, and anything you might need for the shower should be inside the stall. Thanks. He immediately leads me to do my dirty work. <laughs> Literally. And I intend to be quick about it. I hastily disrobe and take a towel to cover my unmentionables, quickly pacing through each stall, looking for an empty one. Two of the stalls at the front seem to be occupied already, so I decide to just take the one next to it. So I get ready to go in, though. Someone exits the stall directly next to me. Wait. A wet, dripping and bulky wolf emerges from the shower's mist without a towel to cover his... What's its? Oh, that felt nice. Now, where's that towel? Oswald and I lock gazes, both of us pausing to process what it is that we're currently witnessing. When it finally sinks in, our faces immediately turn red. Don't look! The wolf stammers as he hastily covers up his nether regions in his arm. My legs suddenly feel like jelly and I'm able to move anywhere, let alone shimmy towards the stalls. That raccoon, he must have known this would happen. Ah, fuck me. Oh, wait. What are you standing there for? Oh, get in! I, 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 I can't. Then, just as I'm thinking that things couldn't get any worse, another pair of wet footsteps walk out of the other occupied stall. Oh, Oz, you said you needed... Oh, just kill me already. Get in the stall! Yes, sir. My body immediately reacts and I quickly place myself inside the stall, finally feeling like I'm starting to calm down. Man, what an absolute disaster. So I didn't need to make things any more awkward between me and that hot-headed tiger. Not to mention any more hostile. I can still hear them talking outside. It's muffled, though. All right. I think I've calmed down enough. Time to do the one thing I came here for. I place my towel on the metal rack, then turn the centre knob slowly. The shower begins flowing with a soft trickle of water. Hmm. This way? I turn the right knob more. The water then becomes hotter and falls harder with steam beginning to form. <laughs> nope! Too hot! Too hot! I hurriedly turn the right knob back, mean turning the left knob. The heat then suddenly turns into a chilling flow. Gah! <laughs> Cold shock! 
I came to an experiment with the water temperature. I wanted to get it just right. After finding the perfect temperature, I proceeded to rinse the rest of my body while letting my eyes wander to see where the shampoo is. After finally finding the rather small sized bottle in the metal rack, I pick it up and check how much of its contents is left. It's already half empty. I guess someone else would tell me it's also half full. But then again, it's not going to get me any more shampoo. I squeeze the bluish white liquid as hard as I can, squirting onto my palm in a satisfying swirl. After pouring enough of my whole body, I put the bottle back down, turn the water off, then proceed to lather myself. I try to work my way around the bandaged ear when I get there. After everything seems covered, I turn the water back on and rinse myself thoroughly from the tip of my ears to the tip of my toes. Good thing the bandage is hydrophobic, but that would have posed some problems. There we go. After closing the shower, I look for the air dryer button out of instinct. My old apartment had it. It was always a big help in drying off my fur instead of just a towel afterward. To my disappointment, this stall didn't have any. I sigh in resignation. I miss my old apartment already. Why did this even have to happen? I wrap the towel around my waist, expecting my clothes to be where I left them. Instead, they're nowhere to be seen. Where am I? Psst. Huh? To my surprise, Oswald is still here with a towel now wrapped around his waist, hiding all of his... manly glory. There seems to be some sort of hollow tattoo on his left arm. I'm surprised he has one. So big, too. I was fully expecting him to be long gone at this point. He doesn't need to be embarrassed anymore. Instead, he's sporting his usual demeanour. Are you okay? Oh, boy, you, you saw... Didn't. It's fine, Oswald. Let's just forget it ever happened, okay? Adrian. Oswald trails off a bit, but quickly recomposes himself. Uh, okay, maybe that's for the best. Oswald sighs before moving towards the exit. Your clothes are over there. I'll see you later, Adrian. Oh, wait. Oswald looks at me expectantly, pulling his puppy eyes on me. Oswald, I just wanted to ask. Yeah? When are you going to be training me? I ask one to confirm what Benji said earlier. Oh, I'm not actually the one doing that today. Oh, wait, then who's going to do it? Well, Benji will. I have to work at the bar today, so just well, try to have more patience with him, okay? Well, trust me, it'll be worth it. A pin in my stomach formed just thinking about spending more time with Benji. I guess I really have no say in it. All right, uh, if you say so. Oswald nods me before leaving towards the hallway. I simply sigh as I check the clothes that Oswald left for me. Hmm, let's see here. The clothes are neatly folded with a note on top of it. What's this? Meet me in the training room, B. Oh, great. I dry myself off with a towel, just enough to wear the clothes without getting them damp. I put on set clothes begrudgingly, knowing these came from Benji. <coughs> to my surprise, they're actually a perfect fit. When did the raccoon pull that off? Well, time to get this over with. After finishing that whole fiasco, I tried to recompose myself before showing my face to Benji. I barely planned for me to see their manly parts. At this point, I don't even know how he wants to end me. I'm debating which one's better, though. The bullet or by my own heat? All right, calm me down, Adrian. I'm supposed to look decent, not at all flustered. I'll probably just give him the satisfaction he wants. I take one deep breath while turning towards the training room where I see the raccoon standing at the shooting range. He isn't stationary on one of the roads, however. He's strafing from left to right, shooting vigorously at each target. It's quite impressive, even more impressive than how accurate Oswald was yesterday. Hey, Benji. No answer. He just gives a glance my way before shooting one more round through the rows. I sit down on one of the benches and proceed to just observe him silently. To my surprise, even with how fast and loose he's been, all of the rows are pinging bullseye. I'm left unfounded how much skill that has to take, let alone how much brain power that has to consume. It's starting to make my head hurt. I quickly snap back to reality when Benji looks my way. 
Your turn. What? I'm not going to have to drag you all the way here, am I? Oh, right, sorry. I stand up and quickly position myself as Benji grabs a pistol from the row in front of me. He hands it to me after I've properly positioned myself. I look at it rather hesitantly. Never thought I'd ever have the need to handle firearms in my entire life. I look to Benji, who's given me a rather judgmental look. Adrian. Yes? Have you ever handled a gun before? No. Benji strokes his chin, thinking of something. Hmm, all right. Benji looks at me intently, removing his hand from his jacket's pockets. He sluggishly points towards the gun, creating a circling motion afterwards. First of all, get your finger off the trigger. You might accidentally pop someone's eye out. I look at my hand and quickly fumble to place my index finger somewhere else, almost dropping the gun in the process. What? Just uh, plant it on the barrel. The barrel? That long thing where the bullets get shot out of. I do as I'm told, placing my finger on the barrel. Huh, so that's what it's called. I can hear Benji sigh under his breath. All right, uh, next thing. I continue to observe the gun while I hear a muffled thump onto one of the benches. I glance in the direction of the sound when I see Benji standing there without his jacket on. Underneath is... a tank top? Okay, he looks a lot leaner without it. Yeah, I suppose that comes with being a thief, but still he's quite well built. You can see some semblance of muscle on his arms. Uh, Adrian, you're, um, a druin. Uh-huh. I wipe my muzzle off quickly to see if I am indeed slobbering. God, I thought I already grew past my dog slobber phase in high school. Okay. You're quite weird, Adrian. Oh, uh, I am? Yes, but in a good way, of course. Shelve those puppy eyes for now. It's the lifeblood of this group, after all. Benji then moves close and positions himself behind me, seeming like he's observing every possible angle of my entire being. It's a little off-putting like I'm being inspected for doing something wrong. All right, and now for your shooting form. You got it. Uh, how do I do that? Before that... Benji clears his throat. How was the shower? I almost immediately choke on my own saliva and tense up. I start feeling flushed as blood rushes up to my head, making me sweat profusely. Oh, jeez, I bet I'm tomato red under all my fur right now. I begin to feel my entire being shriveling up from embarrassment. Suddenly a pair of hands firmly grasp my hips, holding me still. This stiff and tense feeling. Don't forget it when you're ready to shoot. Benji lets go of my hips after a few moments, then begins trailing his hands onto my shoulders. Keep these as relaxed as you can, though. Now, raise the gun and aim at the target. I expect Benji to let go of my shoulders as I raise the gun. He doesn't. Quite the opposite, actually. The more I raise my arms, the more he presses down on my shoulders, making my entire arm feel weird and weak. Well, like this. You're naturally tensing up. Of course, it's to be expected, but... He really moves my side before lightly smacking my back. Proper posture. You aren't a hunchback. You have no excuse pressure in your diaphragm. Benji then moves in front of me, avoiding the path of the gunshot. He adjusts my arms further and places a hand on my chest. It's not easy to shoot when you're breathing steady. Uh, try it. I do as he says, breathing in and out slowly. It becomes a lot more smooth the more I do it, and it feels rather relieving, making the remaining tension of my shoulders abate a bit. See? You get it. Yeah, sort of. Good. Next. Benji moves behind me again. Then, out of nowhere, he smacks my butt. Well, what the hell? Spread the legs a bit more. Keep them balanced, else you'll topple over with bigger guns. Oh, you <clears throat> didn't really have to smack my ass, though. I trail off while looking directly at Benji's straight, emotionless face. Doesn't seem to be kidding around with that. Now, this isn't going to make your aim better, but it's going to put as many odds into letting you line up your shots easier. 
Shooting with accuracy is a skill that takes time, like all things, but utilising these principles can weigh the gunfight more in your favour. I got it. I just nods like up down from nervousness. I feel like I'm about to puke with how weird this pose feels. Alright. Now, place your finger on the trigger and try to control the upward force from the recoil. I half-heartedly do so, hesitating to pull the trigger. I can't dawdle for long, though, especially with Benji watching me so intently. I pull the trigger and hear a muffled shot escape in the barrel, a bit of recoil surging through my body. Huh. Second base. Uh, not bad for a first shot. You, you can tell. Yep, it says right here. He points towards the panel next to the row, displaying a hole on the circle in between the smallest and the second smallest circle. Oh, that's where my shot went. Essentially. I immediately try to loosen up when Benji grunts at me. Hey, who said you can relax? Yeah, I thought we were done. Ron, did you empty that whole magazine you aren't? Now get as close to the centre as possible. Y yes, sir. Fuck, I said out of instinct. I never knew Benji could be this authoritarian. You've never exhibited that aura at all, as far as I've seen. I tried to replicate the form Benji taught me. Legs spread. Okay. Breathe in. Clear. Shoulders. Relaxed. Okay. Now calm down. I managed to eventually empty the whole magazine, each shot taking me a few minutes to prepare before pulling the trigger though. I could see in my peripherals that Benji was stifling a chuckle or two as he watched me, covering up under his hand. Alright, that's enough, Adrian. Yeah, th thanks, God. I almost absentmindedly fling the gun back on its previous position on the table, not even noticing how sweaty I've gotten. So much of that shower half an hour ago. We'll take a break for the rest of the day. We still have a week to go, though, so we'll have the opportunity to work on it some more. Yeah, do we still have to do this tomorrow? Not like you have any other plans at the moment, no? I groan a bit more while sitting down, almost feeling like I might melt onto the bench, when I hear footsteps from the entrance. Uh, knock knock, am I interrupting anything? Oh, Oswald, are you going to open up shop now? I immediately stand to greet Oswald. Finally, he's not in his birthday suit. Instead, he's wearing the same kind of suit he wore in the bar. He must be done getting ready for work. Oh, not yet, Benji. I think I've got my deodorant and perfume somewhere. They aren't in my room. Oh, dear, what a tragedy. I don't suppose you think that... <gasps> Someone stole it? Oh, jeez. The raccoon's got thief jokes. Well, not funny, Benji. I know you wouldn't steal my crap even if your life depended on it. I'm a supporter of natural sense, yes. What I want what people manufacture. Oswald gives the raccoon a rather disgusted look. He got the same idea that I did when Benji said that. Didn't land? Huh. Uh, it's right next to the boxing ring. Benji looks at Oswald, then at me rather flippantly. I use vanilla extract, thank you very much. Oswald comes back, two spray cans in hand. Seems already sprayed them on the way here, as a distinct, rather strong smell of men's deodorant. Are oh, you no know, fun, Oz? Oswald nods with a smile, his expression changes when he looks my way. He's wearing a rather guilty expression, then his face contorts to annoyance when he looks back at Benji once more. I hope you're not overworking him, for your own sake. Kind of hard not to, especially on the week's deadline to make him ready for the mission. Oswald briefly bares his teeth, making violent gestures in Benji's way. I'm taken aback at how protective Oswald is of me. I intervened for Benji's sake. Well, it's okay, Oswald. I'll be fine. Besides, I kind of do need to keep up with you guys if I don't want to, you know. Oswald's clearly surprised, looking a little embarrassed as he slowly backs away. Oh, uh, don't worry, Adrian. I'll make sure nothing happens to you. Don't worry, yeah? I happily nodded him, both of us blushing before Oswald excuses himself. Well, I uh, have to open the bar now. I take care of him, Benji. I'm not his babysitter. Oh, why do I even bother? Oswald rushes back towards the entrance, leaving Benji and me alone. 
There he goes again. Benji seems rather exhausted after that interaction, much more than when he was training me. I swear, that wolf can be a handful, especially because of... Benji eyes me from head to toe. Awkwardly try to cover myself up, with his gaze being just so judging. It's nuts. He might as well be a squirrel instead. Adrian. Yeah? If we're going to spend so much time together, I should definitely learn more about you. Me? What's so special about me? Hmm. Maybe about why you wanted to be a DJ? Oh, that? It's just a really cheesy story. Benji changes position, signalling how intently he's listening. I clear my throat as I slightly reposition myself as well, ready to tell this story. Well, I didn't really grow up in a, a normal family. How so? If I had to describe it, it would be, I guess, abusive? I don't really know. It wasn't like I was hit or anything. Oh. My parents... Well, we lived in the countryside. Simple life, you know. You're only supposed to dream as big as the town you're raised in, and... Well, that's about as far as I could get with my parents. I immediately start to feel like tearing up. In an instant, I feel a gentle touch on my back. I looked at Ben, she was giving me an uncharacteristically concerned look. I was a big fan of music. Whenever I told my parents anything besides what they wanted from me, I kind of just... Ran for it. Soon high school came around. Pretty gloomy, so I started sharing my playlists. People liked it, so I thought, hey, why don't I make my own music? Then she gives me an improving look for I continue with my story. I went to college with a friend. Name's Dylan. He was and still is my biggest fan, if you could call him that. He's the last nail in the coffin for me to really strive for DJ in. Really connect with people, bring them together. Huh. You were spotted a pacifist. What? Benji refuses to continue, however. He instead eyes my bandaged ear. Yeah, I'm sorry for grazing that. Yo, know, this is not a big deal. Oswald says it should have healed by now, but... That's strange. I hate to say this, but... Let the cat check it out. She'll hear you from the infirmary. Oh, you sure? Benji nods, helping me stand. He takes back his jacket and wears it once more, placing his hands back into the pockets. I make my way to the infirmary, but Benji stops me midway. Adrian, oh wait. Yeah, what is it? Uh, tomorrow, when we train, I'll be less strict. Really? What the change? You seem to respond better to that approach. Besides, I did say I wanted to get a closer look at you. Now I have. Oh, uh, okay. I'll see you later then, Benji. I leave towards the infirmary, hoping to see Ellie soon. Maybe Oswald dropped my bandage wrong so he hasn't healed yet? I guess I'll find out soon. Meanwhile... Adrian, you're the only child... It should remind me of him so much. How can someone who grew up in the dark have such an empathetic heart? I turn to the bend, the light of the infirmary illuminating the dim hallway. I survey the surroundings. No sign of life can be found. I sheepishly look around the nooks and crannies rarely, hoping that she has those cat-like invisibility powers all felines I've met seem to have. After a few minutes of search, however, I still came up empty-handed. I do not need another workout today. This life will certainly need some getting used to. I resign myself to sit on one of the examination tables, just catching my breath. As I do so, the door opposite of me whirs before quietly opening up, with Ellie appearing from the room on the other side with a tray of beakers and flasks. Alright, that should be all this week's extracts. Now for the reagent inventory check. She places the tray into the shelves without even taking notice of me. She seems to be deep in thought, so I try to gently catch her attention. Uh, Ellie? And then we could change your potassium chlorate for white phosphorus with the projectile grenades. 
Oh, geez, looks like being gentle isn't really going to have her attention. Ellie! But for the smoke rays, we could stick with the chlorates. Ellie! Sweet light of Eden. She jolts upwards, her fur all bristled. Yes, I went too far. Oh, uh, uh, hi there. Oh, it's just you. Uh, is there something you need? I notice she's still shivering from the shock, so I tried to talk a bit more slowly than usual. Um, it's about this bandage? The one on you, but that shouldn't be on for more than a few minutes. And did Oswald forget to trigger it? Tr trigger it? Oh, well, Eat Night Medical Equipment works quite differently. Uh, let me see here. She inches closer towards me and reaches out for the bandage, then begins to tickle it. Though the ear is covered, I can still feel a paw trailing across the surface. So I was making my ear twitch. What are you doing? Agitating the bandage. It's made of a polymer that releases spores, which then accelerate the healing process. Now please try to stay still. She continues to trace her finger across the bandage. I start feeling a lot chillier. At first, the observed breeze started blowing at me. Then I felt my legs going numb. My hands then began tingling. My vision started to blur a bit too, with my head aching in tandem with it. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, all right. The blood flow will start coagulating the air, so you might feel some imbalances. It should go away after a little bit. The trailing stops, and the bandage begins to fall on its own. Its thread falls onto my muzzle, which Ellie quickly takes and crumbles before promptly disposing. She pulls herself close to the wound and examines it thoroughly. Um, is it all right? Ah, it's healed, but... But what? Mm -hmm. I guess you'd just have to see for yourself. I blow out air in anxiety. I take out my phone and turn on its front camera to look. It seems fine, except... The part's chipped off? It's, it's just... It's just gone. What the hell? Why is it still chipped off? Oh, uh, the bandage just accelerates the healing process, but... It doesn't magically regenerate the body part itself. Oh, fuck. Everyone's going to think I'm some sort of troublemaker if I keep getting shit like these. Oh, Adrian, it is a bit unavoidable in this line of work. I grimace at the thought of more scars like these. I mean, Oswald gets shit like this, and he comes out of it a sexy beast. But as for me, well, I sigh before facing Ellie once more. Guess it can't really be helped. Oh, thanks, Ellie. Oh, no problem, Adrian. She surprised and becomes quite flustered at my gratitude. I guess she really is just easily flushed. I thought she was like going towards Benji. No, it doesn't seem it's a specific thing. Then again, Benji constantly patronising on top of the constant and antagonising probably isn't helping either. Anyways, I'm just... I stand on an examination table and start walking towards the exit. Going to go and see if I can... Oh, oh wait. Ellie sheepishly stops me. Adrian, I require something that needs... And he trails off the last few words into a mumble. Needs? Needs what? She continues to mumble to herself, and I just stand in confusion. Measurements. My what? I, uh, well, uh, just come with me, please. I hesitate to go with her, sceptical about the direction she's headed. She seems to be inching towards the lab. The part of me just feels squeamish to go in there, especially because of the impression I got from Alice's warnings. Can't you just get them here? Um, well, my scanning equipment is in there, so... An awkward silence follows. I suppose I shouldn't be giving Ellie a hard time. Something tells me it'd be a lot more trouble than it's worth to upset Ellie. A sign resignation. Fine, fine, let's go into your lab then. Ellie's face relaxes relief. Uh, all right, uh, this way, please. Ellie meekly points towards the door she came from, which makes my uneasiness resurface. I try my best to stifle it as I follow her, constantly telling myself this isn't going to be as bad as it's starting to look. I wrap my arms gently round myself as the cat opens the doors and ushers me in. 
After the doors open, though, a surprising scent of fragrant flowers near the greenery overwhelms my nose. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the canines that give a more acute sense of smell compared to others. Well, please allow yourself to acclimate to it. It's not the least bit harmful, I assure you. I just nod while rubbing my nose a bit. Feels like it's pollen season all over again. As soon as I enter, I immediately understand why so many varied scents are in the air. The entire place is filled to the brim with different kinds of plants in all shapes and sizes. Ellie trails from the leaves as she passes by she heads into the direction of a smaller room, examining a few of the flasks and the containers. I stand there, extremely dumbfounded, just stare blankly at all the plants. So, uh, Ellie... Oh, wait a moment, I'm still calibrating the systems. More silence only broken by the rustling of leaves, the continuous whir of the machines and the occasional clinking of glass. Ellie passes by in quick bursts, taking a piece from the nearby leaf, then going to some of the counters, then stores a beaker or two in a sealed container. It's quite a mesmerising sight, kind of like watching Dylan mixing drinks. I do wonder, how's he holding up? I have to tell him that, for the most part, I'm doing all right. I'm just not sure if he knows all of these goings on in his place of work. Adrian, it's time for me to, um... My measurements? Yes, and for that you may have to... to... She stutters more, her face becoming more and more flushed. I raise an eyebrow at her, confused about what she wants me to do. Uh-huh. a strip. Oh, fucking hell, no way! It's a strip. <laughs> Why do I have to be... Uh, I'm sorry. It's just that uh, I uh, j just need to examine you in, f in full. I try to hide my embarrassment, tugging at my clothes tightly as if that will prevent me from ever stripping in front of her. Ellie also seems to be shriveling up like me. She's definitely not comfortable with this either. I sigh once more, immediately understanding one thing. We both want to get this over with. I just have to mm, comply. Uh, all right. Really? I begin to take off my shirt and pants. I try my best to expel every single embarrassing feeling of off of my body as I slowly strip down to my underwear. To my surprise, Ellie seems unfazed by it, remaining as timid as she normally seems to be around everyone. She continues to wait expectantly to get onto my birthday suit. I just have no choice on the matter whatsoever. Taking a deep breath, I take off my underwear in one swift motion, my sheath in full view. Yeah. <sighs> All right, uh, this way, uh, please. She shifts me onto a lit platform. I have to shimmy my way through the tight space there is a lab. I've been covering my unmentionables with my paws, waves of embarrassment never ceasing to wash over me. Well, at least I don't stink. Whilst that's another thing I'd have to be embarrassed about. All right, Adrian, stand straight and keep all of your extremities within the square. The scan will begin soon. Okay. Ellie moves the computer, typing in things I can barely see as she repairs the device. When she presses enter, the device lights up with multiple light sensors that pass over my body in quick succession, both in top to bottom and left to right motions. I try my best to stay as stiff and straight as possible, keeping my crotch out of her view, and before I even know it, the scan is finished. Uh, Alright, uh, quite average numbers. Average? She called me average? Well, that just hurts my feelings indirectly. Oh, uh, does that mean I can uh, go now? Uh, not yet. I still have to do my uh, personal examination. Your what? Please, calm down. It's only a physical exam. You d d don't have to worry. I falter a bit while Ellie takes out a stethoscope. She places the two earpieces in and begins pressing the diaphragm onto my chest. Hmm. Normal heart rate. Good, good. That's weird. Ellie only gives me a passing glance for continue to push onto my chest. All right, uh, please turn around. I'm not sure if I want to. 
Ellie doesn't hesitate. Instead, I hear her pressing a button that spins the platform, revealing to her my backside. Ah! She presses down the diaphragm again, but in a different location on my back this time. Now, take a deep breath for me. I hesitantly do so. She's quick to take the stethoscope off after she's done. I turn my head to face her, feeling completely violated. Is it finally over? Uh, one more thing. Uh, c c c can you b b b please uh, uh, take your hands off your sheath? I gasp loudly. No way! I immediately curl up and attempt to cover what's left of my dignity, to which she reacts by just staring at me wide-eyed. Adrian, please, just let me take a quick look. I just need a second or two. It'll be quick, I, I promise. I, I can't. Ellie sighs to herself. Uh, just a glance, please. She looks at me with pleading eyes. I do have to admit, they're quite effective. I start actually feeling bad. I won't be giving her too much of a hard time. She doesn't need to be deriving any sort of pleasure or joy of this entire experience any more than I am. I'm not being too selfish. Um, I begrudgingly do as she says, slowly revealing my sheath to her. Just like she says, it only took a few seconds of glancing at it before signalling me to cover it up again. See, just a quick glance, that's all. How many times do I have to do this? Ellie moves her bangs as she studies the results on her tablet, after which she looks back at me. Uh, it was merely to check if you're in good health and for the new gear I'm tasked with preparing for you. She takes out some rolls of cloth and immediately something becomes familiar about them. I didn't take a hard look before. I'm really sure those are the same rolls that Benji had with him when I bumped into him. Aren't they on bad terms? Why would Benji do something that remotely involves Ellie? So many questions, so we get so little time for answers. Seems to be the modus operandi around here. It's starting to get annoying. Is that so? Yes, it's to make sure you're as comfortable as possible. Uh, I'm aware that you're quite uneasy in our base as it is, so I simply... She trails off again. Seems like she doubts herself whether she's doing a good thing or not. She certainly reminds me of someone. A guy that D Dylan would often scold back in college. Heh, why am I beating around the bush about it? I know he's only setting me straight. I can be more comfortable with him here. He knows me best after all. Uneasy, huh? I guess you can say that. Ellie notices I'm deep in thought, so she clears her throat. Sorry, did I remind you of something? I sound to a spot on assessment. You're quite observant. She places the rolls of cloth onto her desk and takes a towel under it before handing it to me. Here you go, I'll let you change and cool down. Uh, you can leave afterwards. Uh, thanks, Ellie. I wrap the towel around my waist and grab my clothes. There's a room next to Ellie's lab where I can change. It's a lot smaller. So small that I think only Ellie and I can fit in here. I quickly put my clothes back on and leave the towel in the room. I leave the small room, but as I make my way towards the exit, I take a glance back in Ellie's direction. Part of me doesn't just want to leave. I'm not going to let myself just go with their M.O. Take a deep breath and approach Ellie. Adrian? Hey. I said you were free to leave, so why aren't you? Her tone has a more curious tone than of anger. She turns from her seat to fully face me as I take a seat next to hers. I just wanted to talk, you know. It's not like I have anything better to do. Ellie raises an eyebrow at me. Didn't you have some training to do with Benji, though? We already had, actually. He sent me here after, after I'd had my ear fixed up. Ellie clicks her teeth, her hackles raising suspicion. That doesn't seem to sound like him. Oh, what do you mean? He did cause the injury in the first place, no? I'm taking it back at Ellie's frankness. Uh, well, yes. An awkward silence fills the room. I'm unsure what to say and I don't feel like beating around the bush or progress this kind of conversation anywhere. Those rolls, they came from Benji, right? Ellie looks at them and starts getting flushed. Yes, uh, what about it? 
I don't know, but it kind of feels weird that he does that. He says he doesn't want to associate himself with you at all. Ellie's posture deflates, a deep sigh escaping her breath. I guess I was too direct. I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're right. He doesn't want anything to do with me. She clenched her fist on her lab coat. You're bothered by it, aren't you? She nods at me meekly before turning to her desk. I roll my chanks to hers and make eye contact. It's not the hate and disdain I'm bothered by, it's the reasons why. She glances at me and quickly recomposes herself. Not that you have anything to worry about, of course. This is just the way her head's always been. I click my teeth and raise my brow at her. Do you know why? She shakes her head. I gently touch her shoulder, our eyes meeting for a bit. It's a mystery to me. All I know is he only scowls at me and treats me like I'm a huge bother to him. Sometimes even simply breathing seems to offend him. Have you tried asking him about it? Huh? Well, the only way to find the answer to this mystery is to ask him yourself. If he can't give an answer and he's hating you with any logical reason, you have to be confronted with that fact. If he does, then you know what's wrong and you can at least see if the problems are with you or with him. Ellie stares wide-eyed at me. Has she never really considered actually confronting Benji? I guess that makes sense. She doesn't seem to want to be in anyone's way. Right now, though, that's her biggest enemy. I, I don't know if I can, Adrian. You won't even let me see the light of day when it comes to socialising. I pull Ellie to face me and she stiffens up as I do so. It's exactly why you have to confront him. I don't know Benji as well as you do, but I can sort of tell that he doesn't push twice. What? If he pushes you and you stay down, that's the end of the line. But people who he pushes and they stand their ground, they seem to catch his attention longer than anything. Adrian, I don't know if it's... She's still in doubt. I can understand that. Nothing's going to happen if she stays like this. At the very least, she has to consider it. Come on, Adrian, think. A friend once told me something that stuck with me ever since that point in my life. Or what? Regretting the silence is the crappiest feeling ever. Better to let it all out than let it keep it bottled up inside. Is that so? Ellie thinks for a moment. She looks around aimlessly, clearly debating something. A few moments of silence, she looks at me. I'll think about it. I can't just ignore all the work and clutter I have in my lap. Then let me help you. That way you can focus on thinking. Adrian, why do you care so much? Oh, well... I think for a moment. This has been mostly just my feelings overriding my judgement. I'm already too deep into it to go back now. I'm already committed to finding out the mysteries of this group. This whole situation as a whole. If I another person to help me solve those mysteries, best I take them. I think of it as a personal thing. If you say so, I won't pry if you don't want to say. Ellie takes a basket filled with flasks of chemicals and other liquids and hands it to me. First, I'll need these to be relocated to the infirmary. I'll tell you what you have to do next afterwards. You got it. I enthusiastically take the basket and start marching to the infirmary. Oh, be careful it doesn't spill. Oh dear. Later that day... That should be the last thing that needs doing around here. Now to take a well-deserved break. I carefully place the last empty basket under Alice's counter and crash onto the lounge's sofa. Phew, that was a workout. I knew she had so many baskets. I puff out a large exhale as I slowly sink to the soft foam. I swear I can just take a nap right here. That is, there wasn't some faint knocking coming from in front of me. I jolt upwards and the whiplash from a sudden movement causing the imbalance of blood circulation hitting me a bit hard afterwards. I think I'm over for the way for my vision to return to normal, but as soon as it does I see Oswald leaning on the door frame, a smile plastered on his face. Oswald? Hey there. I jump off the sofa to greet him as he looks at me with a smirk. I don't really know what's gotten him in such a good mood, but I'm not that curious to ask either. He's here now and that makes me feel a lot safer. So, how was training, Adrian? Benji didn't give you a hard time, yeah? Oh, training? 
Well, it was... Suddenly a large figure appears behind Oswald and pushes him off the doorway. Oswald nearly crashes onto me. He manages to stop himself midway. He then immediately gazes at the figure, who turned out to be Max. Lock in the way, Oz. You don't have to shove me, though. Yeah, whatever. Sometimes you might forget to tell the pup. Hitting your head might help jog your memory. <laughs> Max then leaves in the direction of the hallway, disappearing into the bend. I look at Oswald questioningly. Tell me what? Oswald blinks at me for a moment before lighting up in realisation. Oh, yeah. I told Dylan about your uh, situation. My situation? Oh! Yeah, I told him you were all right and you were bunking with me. I give him a suspicious look. Wouldn't that be a bit concerning from his point of view? Oswald thinks for a moment. Hmm, maybe. He didn't seem to mind, though. Ah, I see. I see. Does Dylan know about all this? I gesture all around me. Slight surprise forms on Oswald's face from that question. He tugs his collar afterwards, exhaling a large puff of air. Not really. Oh, well, well, not at all, I hope. I... well, I guess that makes sense. Oswald places his paw on my shoulder. Don't worry, Adrian. The less people know about this, the less people will be hurt because of us. That doesn't really ease my conscience. The wolf sighs as he lets go of me. Uh, I had a feeling it wouldn't. Just, please, stay strong for us, yeah? I take a deep breath, giving Oswald the best smile I can give. All right, I will, for the team. Oswald nods, walking towards the hallway to the rooms. Well, I need to get changed. Talk to you later, yeah? I nodded at him and off he goes to his room. A little bit after he disappears from my view, Benji exits from the same hallway. Oh, Adrian, figures you're the first thing the wolf sees to have a grin like that plastered on his face. He walks towards me in a rather relaxed manner while sporting a mischievous smirk. I sit back down on the sofa and recompose myself before facing Benji. Hello to you, Benji. What do you mean by a grin like that? Benji chuckles, crossing his arms as he strokes his chin. Hmm. Well, you're quick to study, so I doubt you need my input to reach a verdict. Is that so? Second opinion wouldn't hurt. Uh, true, but I'm interested in a solo conclusion. I laugh Benji's remarks off because he's right. I am smart enough to know what he's insinuating. It feels a bit too convenient and weird that he's so happy around me. It doesn't help that it's the only lead I've got on the guy. All right, I'll keep you posted. Only if I ask for it, of course. As Benji and I continue our playful banter, Alice walks in with Ellie. All right, that makes four. Where are the last two? They're back in their rooms. They're changing. Should be here any minute now. Alice nods, tapping Ellie on the arm. The cat quickly walks to the corner opposite where Benji and I are. I wonder if she's done making up her mind. It's been a few hours since I asked her to think about it. Hey, Benji, mind if I have a minute? Not at all, darling. Ah, just come with me. Ha <laughs> of course, of course. Benji turns to me. Why don't you keep her company? Girl's a disappointing mess. I stifled my slight annoyance at Benji and nodded him. He's really hell-bent on keeping Ellie at arm's length, huh? I walk towards Ellie and she's clearly shaken by Benji's presence. Oh, it doesn't affect her decision. Hey, Ellie, you doing okay? Ellie looks at me briefly before recomposing herself, but keeping her hands clasped still. I'm all right, Adrian. This is just my homeostatic reaction to his presence. What? A force of habit. Ah, anything I can do to help? I don't know. I just have to get used to it. Then I'll be back to normal. Uh, all right. Let me know if you need anything, okay? I nod to her before turning to sit back on the couch. The sound of her stuttering stops me. Adrian? Yes? I haven't made a decision yet. I sigh inwardly. Ellie, it's okay, just take your time. No point rushing something as important as this. 
Uh, all right. So I can you to try and comfort Ellie. Max Nozzle arrived from changing clothes. Oh, good. The whole team is here. So. Hmm. Alice presses the button, which feels all the panels on her PC. Catches our attention, even more so as Alice claps her hands to actually catch our attention. All right, gather round. Time for the team briefing. Benji's the first to take his seat, cross-legged at that, on a spare bar stool next to the couch. He takes that stool close to the screen, positioning himself just in front of the couch. Ellie, on the other hand, takes a spare seat on the other end of the room, to the side. Max takes Ellie's original spot behind the two. Oswald pushes the couch to the centre of the room, a clear view of everything Alice has presented on the screen. He crashes onto it, his weight causing the couch to scoop back a bit. He doesn't seem to care. He just looks at me for tapping the space next to him. Thanks. Oh, I don't mention it. Alice clears the throat, she pulls out the keyboard. Ahem, now let's get started. Alice flashes several images of a large, extravagant building. I'm immediately able to recognise the kind of architecture, figure out it's located somewhere in the uptown districts, up in the hills. It's supported by tall, intricately carved pillars by the entrance, with a large man-made tunnel opening just in front of it. There'll be a charity party that's going to be hosted by Eden Corps here. Apparently it's their usual practice to bolster the monetary support from the uptown residents. It's going to be held in the uptown community centre, while they'll be importing a data bank from Eden Island itself to track the guests. Oswald leans forward a bit from the couch, dispersing the weight forward. Yeah, we made that clear. We also know that the data bank has some possible information regarding the next steps we'll take to take Eden Corpse down. Right. However, that same data bank makes it extra hard to do long-range comms as well as infiltrating the community centre. Keeps track of guests going in and out in real time thanks to all the patrols. Luckily, Benji got us away in. The well, possibility was a bit far-fetched at first. A contact of mine could convince the rear guard that we're staff and let us in. Adrian, however, changes that. After proposing a better course of action for the previous DJ, Adrian can fill that role instead. Once we're in, Adrian can be our surveillance as Alice's comms are offline once we're in. I start to shake a little at the realisation of how vital I am to sell this whole alibi. The equipment all three will need will be set just before the mission starts. I plan for uh, most scenarios. I'm sure I was going to take place on a work day. I'll make sure the bar's safe while you guys are wreaking havoc. Alice nods for turning to her desk, taking out a small device from a drawer. She tosses it to Benji and the raccoon effortlessly catches it. Plug that into the data bank once you get there. It'll mine all that data and keep it safe until you get back to base. Alice turns back to the panels again, switching the images from the schematics of the building to five profiles. You all seem to have code names in place instead of actual names. Also, I've got some bad news. Before the last mission's comms went dark, the ruckus that we caused got the Omega Squad's attention. The Omega Squad? What's that? It's Eden Corp's Elite Task Force. I've got no leads to the actual identities, only some code names. However, one thing's clear. Reports I have say they're all unlike any normal soldier in any military force on the planet. He shouldn't define at least one of the natural laws of the world. Alice's grip tightens on a keyboard a bit, clicking her tongue as she lays each complete profile that she displays on the screens. They're all very dangerous. At least one of them might very well be in the charity party. I've also heard there's some hired muscle there too. They're all packing heat. Hope that whatever happens that party doesn't tip them off and cause a gunfight. Oswald, Benji, Adrian, be careful. Benji scoffs while lightly stroking his fur. I exhale with a shaky breath, able to stifle my uneasiness from the whole mission now. Hired muscle and some enigmatic super soldiers? You've got to be kidding me. I should be fine, it's only some richy party. The data bank's probably in the storage facility the centre. Those pompous idiots aren't going to foot in that, set foot in that dingy place. Still, if anything goes wrong... We'll handle it. Oswald appears to say to Alice, but his gaze is on me. Is he trying to reassure me? Right, let's get to it, Miss Eitzen. Everyone nods without hesitation. Ellie is the first to stand and return to her lab after the briefing. 
and as she turns to working on the panels, the Max stretches a bit after leaning on the corner for a while. I must rest early today. Still have some training to do. Max turns the hallway afterwards, even with Oswald and Benji. Benji leaps off the bar stool, facing the two of us. All right, you're taking over his hand-to-hand -hand combat training tomorrow, right? I raise my eyebrow at Benji, looking at Oswald afterwards. Hand-to-hand -hand combat? Mm-hmm. Giving yourself skull in both close and long-range combat is the best way to keep yourself alive. Luckily, exciting one can also do that, but that's on all case-by-case -case basis. Your skills are just one big wild card, you know. So, you're trying to see where I'm good at, is that what you mean? Oswald nods enthusiastically at me, which is admittedly quite endearing. Suddenly some ringing comes from Benji. The raccoon is also surprised by it as well. Ah, it's from Ray. Hold on, let me answer this. Benji takes the call, even Oswald and I alone to talk a bit more. Oswald looks at me rather gently, his gaze neither too intrusive nor too aloof. Pats me on the back, fully grasping my attention in a heartbeat. Come on, Adrian, let's talk on the way. So the hand motions the hallway, and I'm more than happy to oblige. Sure. We begin to walk. I was really attempting to break the silence so far. Oswald places his hands onto his pockets, relaxed and seemingly undisturbed, unlike me. I think about so many things right now, and it's starting to overwhelm me to the point I can't even describe them, not even to myself. The mission, my life, the possibility of death, the people around me. It becomes a deafening ringing in my mind, each footstep making me fall deeper and deeper into an anxiety-filled collapse. Then he speaks. Hey, Adrian. Yes, Oswald? Well, I never asked how your day was while I was gone. So, how did it go? How was my day, huh? Well, I can pick a few things out from today. Probably going to have to skim out on the shower, though, for obvious reasons. Hmm. There was training with Benji, which is a mixed bag in itself. Then again, there is Ellie's exam to consider. Oh, decisions, decisions. Training with Benji was okay, for the most part. Well, is that so? Did you learn a lot? <laughs> Just the basics. He let me shoot a few rounds, but that was it. Figures. Well, next time we ever get the chance, I'll train you myself and make sure you'll learn a lot more with a better shot. He winks at me while sporting a white grin. Well, something tells me that Benji can easily prove him wrong. I'm not going to tell him that to his face, though. I'll let him have his moment. We continue to talk a bit more. This is about his day in the bar. Like when I was there, it was mostly uneventful, and most of the DJs didn't seem to interest him either. While we continue to walk, a rather slender figure shoves past between us, revealing itself to be Benji, coyly swishing his tail as he skips ahead of us rather flippantly. All right, you love birds, get a room. Benji chuckles before entering his room. His words linger in the air and cause me to become flushed. Ugh, that raccoon never fails to get under my skin. The love birds. Uh, Adrian. The love birds. I can feel my face getting red. This isn't good. Adrian, you're starting to heat up. Oswald places his paw on my shoulder and reflexively brush it away. I'm fine. Let me just calm down. Oh, okay. I take a few moments to let my emotions die down with a few deep breaths. I start feeling better, though I can't seem to get rid of his words ringing in my ears. Ugh, how embarrassing. Embarrassing? Sorry, Oswald. Benji's probably just trying to get into my skin. Oswald chuckles. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Right. Besides, that's been lovebirds. Bit of a stretch, don't you agree? A few seconds pass. No response. I wait for a few more to pass. Complete silence. You agree, right? Oswald's only response is nervously chuckle while rubbing his nape. You swing that way? The wolf's the one to get flustered this time. You'd be surprised. What? All this time you were... Uh, yes, I do prefer the company of men more. This? I wasn't expecting this at all. 
All of a sudden, a swarm of questions filled my brain. They quickly switched gears went to this whole rabbit hole I've just discovered. Well, what's since when? Instead of indulging the question I absentmindedly blurted out, Oswald giggles while he opens his room door. At raised then we both reached our bedrooms, much to my dismay. Now the wolf has an excuse to dodge my questions. Huh, good night, Adrian. Uh, Oswald, yeah. At this point, all I can do is laugh. Just what the heck is this coincidental yet stupidly infuriating cliffhanger? I swear, it's the kind of stuff that Dylan would enjoy for a good book. Now I have to live in it? Ah, how frustrating to be kept in the dark. Yet, yeah, it's quite the big step in solving the mystery, there's Oswald. Maybe he has the hots for me? No, that can't be it. Why would it be interested in a guy like me? I guess I'll just think about it later. I enter my room and crash onto the bed, raring to get to the next day. I made decent progress learning from some of the people in this group, and I hope I get to learn more. There we go, that was the latest build of Eaton's Reach. And of course, uh, as soon as I can after the next public build comes out, I'll uh, make sure it gets on the schedule for the videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. And all that's really left to say, as it has been quite the day in work. <laughs> Thanks to all my patrons. I, as always, I do say this every time, but I really appreciate you. You have no reason to support me, but you do. Thank you. And my top patrons are Kartek, Copas Visser, Basuksu, Dissonance, Sindri Dragowulf, Tiger Cub, Gunnar Muller, Kopi, Marcus Larkaskerton, Bastian Brandon Bradford, Ida Corval, Anubis Silverwind, Brian Hall, Sumuto, David Taylor, Evan King, and Grith. They are all my $10 a month Canadian supporters. So the next video will actually be William's route in the smoke room. And if you follow Dirk the Red Panda, of course, you'll see he has done that already. But I'll be doing it this weekend, probably recording on Sunday. So depending on where you are in the world, based on when I, you normally see my uploads, it will be a day later than I normally do. Just a few things to get done on Saturday, but there'll be a video this weekend. And that will uh, take us up to the current end of Williams Route in the Smoke Room. And for Bayline City, next year, I think. We'll be back there. We'll have to see what happens. But until next time, bye for now.